happening, Fat Week Show fans, Fat Week Show people, them, and look what the cat has dragged in. We have Hotso Bilal Ramopo up what in the house doing? here, man. How are you doing, my brother? I am very well, thank you, Ola. I am honored to be on the Fight Week Show, man. Finally, we're here together. Finally, we're here together, man. It's It's been a minute. We're trying, we were trying to put this schedule together, but we know how busy you are. We know how... Um, how wanted you are, how required you are. <laughs> You're a wanted man out there in South Africa, and every, everybody everybody loves you, at least in our community, in the MMA community over there in South Africa, man. And thank you so much uh, for joining us today, man. This is a real, real honor, man. And um, I, I, can't, I can't wait to start, you know, break, breaking things down with you. But first of all, before, before we get into, into everything, um, yes. can, you, can you tell us about about your come up your career uh in in mma and how you how you came to be what i will call you the voice of african mma oh man you know everybody keeps on coining that phrase and um it's i'm so honored you know i really haven't worn that crown to say i really am the voice yet you know and i think the people have called for it but let me let me just um address your your, your question. Uh. So I'm originally an actor and a voice artist and um, a presenter and of course a master of ceremonies. But I am also a huge fight fan, a huge fight fan. Uh. And um, a couple of years ago, while I was in my craft and perfecting my craft and just honing, I came across MMA. Now, I had already been part of a fight community because I have a Muay Thai background, um, an amateur Muay Thai background. And it was during that time that I really, really, you know, the, the love for MMA grew. And while I was the, doing my acting and, and presenting and voice artist, I decided, you know what? I want to be that guy. I want to be the guy if I'm not going to be fighting. I want to be, I still want to be in the hex. And I still want to be around fighters. I still want to experience the adrenaline and that, that taste of iron in your tongue when you're in that area. Mm. And I thought, how, would I, how am I going to go about it? And mm. surprisingly, one day I saw Cairo Howarth. He's the president of the EFC. Mm. And the, I had manifested meeting him because wow. five years prior, I had been in his inbox on that. I had mm. been in his inbox. I, I was plugging in and saying, hey, Cairo, I'm this person. I really would love a chance to do this. I admire um, Shane the Duke Wellington. I admire all the guys that you've had in the, in the hex, but I think I can do an amazing, passionate job at it. Right. And no answer, no answer for a good five years <laughs> until, one, until one day, until one day <laughs> where EFC actually came to the venue where I was working, where I was hosting. Uh -huh. And I was good friends with the CEO at the time. And uh, he, I saw him walking with the president. I said, hey, 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 uh, Brett, please introduce me to, to this man. I know him already. Uh -huh. And I'd love to audition for him. And uh, off the bat, Cairo Howard said, hey, young man, um, so you want to be in the Hex uh, as an announcer? <laughs> I said, yes, yes, please. You know, I'm sure my energy was very, very frantic and I was very excited. <laughs> and he said, well, uh, Give me a link, and that was on the on the on the run, like on the fly. Mm. And um, I remember the exact words. You know, it was, "Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the home of big winners, your favorite world-class gaming destination, the Times Square Casino." My name is this, this, and this. And he's a very stoic guy. He's a very calm guy. And uh, he looked at me. He said, "Well, come through to the High Performance uh, Center next week, and we'll mm. see we'll see how it goes." And all of that was it. That was it. I met the family. I met the EFC family. We did a few rehearsals. And before I knew it, I was doing my, first, my very first EFC show. Um, and man, it's been an absolutely blessed journey. Wow. I mean, to, to, to manifest something like that, uh, to, to, to then end up meeting him, getting somebody that knows him to, to actually introduce you to him giving him that audition right there and then and, and inviting you to 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 the headquarters just, just every everything just sounds like you know this this is this is what you was born to do uh and it was only a matter of time and when you're destined 
for for something like this uh you know mm. the, the way the way that it, it then it then shows up itself it's even it's even a, a a miracle in itself and sometimes you you have to take it you have to take it with both hands and run and i mean we we love your energy in the in the hex we we love we love how how you how you go about your business how you conduct your business and you you're a bit of a fashionista right <laughs> we love your fashion sense we you know we we see we see you on insta all the time you always you always look in the part super duper giving bruce buffer the run for his money i'm telling you right now you give him a run for his money and um you know who, who, who i mean who, who is um who's the inspiration um and even even as far as to go to with, with your designers people that put those those special beautiful toxins together for you <laughs> First, first of all, I wanted to say, and I don't know if many people know this, um, mm. you know this, um, but I have a heritage of some of the, I, I, I'm really very proud about this, that my heritage is both Nigerian and South African. Mm. My father is Nigerian, he's a Hausa man, and yeah. my mom is South African, she's Twana, and they met eons ago, and I, I'm the product of it. And I've <laughs> always believed that Nigerians are at the, you know, the upper echelon of style. And, mm. and still, 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 still today. Preach. And, um, you know, one of my inspirations growing up, and this takes me back to when I was in Nigeria, when my mother was a doctor in Nigeria operating mm. and, um, and, and, and practicing, I would sit outside uh, the rooms in a corridor and I would watch the boxing because they, they, they leave the TVs on the boxing. And I would love the boxing, I would love the action, but there was this prestige that the the ringmaster had, he would come on and he would look like a million dollars, you know, and that strobe light would come onto him and he would command the attention of hundreds and thousands of millions of people. Mm. And, um, you know, I can't quite remember who it was at the time, but for me, the person who really resonates, um, you know, is Michael Buffer in terms mm. of the class, in terms of his stoicness, in terms of how, um, how well put together he is, you know, and that just inspired me so much to to say that if I'm going to be in the ring, I need to I need to reach that level of command. Uh. It's, it's no secret that before you speak, people see you, uh. and until you speak, <laughs> <laughs> that respect is there, you know. And that's one of the things that I feel are a great tool, not just for myself but for everybody in life, you know. Um, your your first point of contact is visual for anyone and I, I would really say that that's my inspiration now, I don't have any any specific designers that dress me sometimes mm. it's myself sometimes <laughs> it's just myself I get into my tux and uh, I get into the I get into the hex I get into the ring because I'm a, I'm a boxing ring announcer as well right. two very very different disciplines mm. but um, still you command the attention of hundreds and thousands and sometimes even millions of people around the world and uh, the the value of being seen um, in a certain light just because of how you dress um, puts you up there even before you do your work, you know. And this is this is my true inspiration, knowing that you are seen before you heard, and the power of it. Incredible, incredible stuff. And uh, uh, you know, you, you're absolutely right. Your your first impression is your appearance. And then exactly. everything else follows. So I totally get where you're coming from there. Yes. And um, and shout out to your moms and your pops, man. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, being being <laughs> both both side both side of Nigeria and South Africa, man. Because I'm Nigerian myself, and um, yes, you know I, I fully, I've, yeah, but yeah, but yeah, but I, I fully, I fully get where you're coming from when you said, you know, the the the, the highest fashion a sense you know a, a lot of it com comes from 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 our culture back there in nigeria man and uh you see you see it all the time yes. um let me let, let me ask you this this question here um you you don't just do this like you said you you you, you know you announce for boxing but you also do like a e-gaming like commentary can you can you tell us more yes. about that Please tell well, us more about is, that. Um, so my, my first commentary gig was huge. Um, I had absolutely no experience but for the masters who had come ahead of me. 
And I had been in the in the ring as a as a ring announcer, and uh, a gentleman called uh, Bruce Hayden. Uh, he doesn't like the name Bruce. Let me just call him Hayden Jones. <laughs> Mr. Hayden Jones from, from Boston, talks South Africa. Right. He he actually saw the potential in me uh, because we 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 often meet at the tournaments and we we talk and we became friends. And he thought, hey man, this is an articulate articulate guy. He's very uh, into boxing, he's passionate about it, and he speaks about it very articulately. Why not get him on board? And I got a call from ESPN one day, mm. and a random call. I remember I was in bed. I don't even know what I was doing. <laughs> I was in bed, and I get a call, and it says, "Hi, I'm Andrea from ESPN." And I sit up. <laughs> me. And he says, um, "Have you ever done commentary, boxing commentary?" I say, no, I've never really done commentary, but I really love to talk about boxing. I mean, I know I know about the discipline of boxing. I know about the moves. And, you know, um, I know some of the boxers. And he says, well, I want to give you a chance to be ringside and do commentary alongside Aiden Jones. And I thought, oh, my God, what a huge opportunity. Mm-hmm. Now, ESPN is obviously under Disney. Um, and, you know, that for me, that was like, it was just mind-blowing that I'm, I'm being hunted by such a huge international company uh. and I, I, I eventually in, in, I, I think initially i said this is so overwhelming but you know us you know us we we are very adventurous <laughs> very adventurous <laughs> in Nigeria and course. african nigerians have the greatest diaspora of any nation on the continent so we jump and we learn how to fly on the way down oh yeah um, and basically that's what happened the next the, 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 within the next month i was seated ringside along some of the best in the industry who had over a decade of experience and i was mm. learning and it was absorbing and I'm, i was enjoying the situation the, the situation and the experience um and and i became part of the espn family that was huge we had monthly fights we had the biggest fights in south africa mm-hmm. um that went worldwide and and you know it was such an honor um being part of that family so yeah this is this was the journey that, that got me to ESPN, and that was just boxing, you know. Mm. Um, I had not even come to to well, e, I mean, um, EFT was already on. I was already on board with, with EFT, but then this was another huge, huge thing for me to be on EFC and ESPN at the same time. And Ola, that's when people started dubbing me the voice of uh, African <laughs> MMA and African combat, um, mm. you know, sports. And I think people really did embrace me because quite often they would see me um, in boxing and then now they're seeing me in, in, in MMA and EFC as well. Became a very regular face, started being loved by the boxers. Have, I, have, I have personal relationships with, uh, with the boxers now, with the fighters, uh, and with uh, their family. Uh, you know, um, so many of them. It's, it's actually a fraternity now more than anything else. <laughs> Incredible, incredible, incredible journey, incredible journey, man. And you know, th- there's nothing better than w- what you said about the Nigerian culture earlier on. With, with with how quick we can adapt to things on the fly. I mean, I don't know yeah. many people that do that better than us on the planet. Yeah. Like we we we're so adaptable. <laughs> um, and to 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 just even shine more light on on your journey and and your career so far i'll I'll say this to you now you you're one of the main reasons why i i tune into to efc pay-per-views every just just to watch you announce just to just to watch you announce and i'm 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 an mma nerd like that because for me it's not (laughs) just (laughs) it's not it's not just uh the the the, it's the whole preparation the build-up the announcing even the ring card girls, you know, everything to do with the whole fight, the referees, what the referees do, like, you know, every, everything about the whole event is something that I take in. I, I, I really, really enjoy every single step up until the fight starts and the fight finishes and then we get onto the next one and then we get to see you announce again. You know, just the whole thing right there. So uh, you, you're a big, big part of uh, every fight, every fight event that you know that I that I watch uh, on the EFC card. Now you have you have this big EFC ring, like <laughs> the thing is is pinned on your Insta. The thing is so big, I don't even know how you carry that stuff. 
<laughs> but can, can you tell us more about about that and the, and how you how you are a, a brand ambassador for 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 the actual uh, for the actual company? Please tell us more. Well, I'll tell I'll tell you about the ring. So the funny story about the ring is that mm. it actually doesn't belong to me. <laughs> so, but but I was so proud. Mm. I was so proud of the man who was wearing that ring. Now, mm. and I think it does definitely testify to how much of a family member I am on, with, with EFC. Gotcha. Uh, the man who owns that ring is called Iga Smiley Kabesa. Oh, I was going to ask you about him, but please yes, carry sir. on. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, that is an absolute EFC legend. Yes. He has over 16, 17 fights in the EFC. Dominated, I think he's he's lost only one, I believe. And he honestly is a talent that I believe should be already in the UFC. I agree. It is currently in the works. Mm -hmm. But he is miles above most of the people in his division. Mm. And it, great, it gave me such great honor to announce him, mm. you know, before the fight. And even more honor to announce another win of his because very soon mm. he'll be gone. You know, very yeah. soon he'll be a, a, a UFC. Yes, <laughs> the yeah. guy don't go. <laughs> no yeah. catch up again. <laughs> so, um, luckily, the guys, luckily, the guys are very humble. I mean, mm. we'll talk about the other guys later that are UFC right now when yeah. they come back. But, and I saw him wearing the ring. And nobody else has that ring, Ola. Let me tell you. Nobody else has that ring. Nobody. It's one and done in the whole of the in the whole of the EFC. Oh my one. god! It has that ring, <laughs> and I saw that ring and I eyed it and I said, you know what? Even if even if even if it's not mine, <laughs> I will claim it, and one day it will be mine. You know, even if they give me my own. Mm -hmm. But um, I was so proud that I wanted to put it up and and for it to be. It's pinned on my Instagram for a reason. Yeah. Um, a lot of my fans who are organic fans, I have mm. I have people who are real people that follow me for very genuine reasons. Mm. They will that's the first thing that they will see when they yeah. get onto my Instagram, onto and this is the message: I'm, I, I am the I am the face of EFC, mm. and um, I, I love it. Um, I love the family. I love what it does for African MMA, and I was very proud to put it put it there. Whether the ring was mine or not, it was a symbol of my love for the EFC, you know. Mm. Um, yeah, so the, basically that was it, and it, it will stay there. <laughs> incre incre incredible, man. And, uh, you know, you, you, you just mentioned, you know, a legend of, of the promotion, a legend of, of, of that division in the EFC promotion. Uh, yes, sir. King, I, I have to preface it by saying King. Igeo Smiley Cabeza. Uh, you know, I've had the privilege of, you know, talking to him uh, privately uh, oh. on, on, on many, many occasions. Proper, genuine, genuine brother. Um, charitable, very, very char charitable guy. Always does his charity work. He takes that very, very, very seriously mm, for people that don't know. Um, yeah. Really, really good brother. And like you said, very, very talented. And I know you've, you've called, you know, you've announced a lot of fighters, you know. I'm I'm wearing a shirt of one of them right now, Kevin Snakes. Kevin Snakes, <laughs> you know. Um, <laughs> shout out to Kevin to Snakes. Me. You don't have to tell me. Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> shout out to Kevin. Um, <laughs> you know. I hope he watches this. I hope Kevin watches this. Uh, uh, I hope he oh, watches as well. It will. It will. It will be. It will be. Uh, uh, um, you know, people. People like um, Terence Black Panther Balello. Uh, mm -hmm. a, a wicked prospect that's you know that's just tearing through the the the, the sport and in in the EFC looking to do big things over there. Uh, we got a lot of love for him. Um, uh, uh, even um, GI Jess, Bradley yeah. Swan, Swampo, um, yeah. you know Shindele Manangela. We, we you know we've seen them oh. all here. Uh, uh, MSP Cam, Cam, <laughs> Cam, Cameron Cameron Simon, you know MSP. Uh, yeah. Lutando Biko, uh, you've had the privilege sorry. of, you know, and 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 Luke Michaels, that's oh, another man. guy. You know what I mean? The series, you're calling you out know. Brother. These are my brothers. You're calling out, man. These are my, I'm, I'm, I'm very close to those guys. Same, same, same here. You know, we've I've built I've built this this 
really really good relationship with all of these guys you know that you know that I've, that, that that i've mentioned to you just now and we, we regular regular contact contact with them like i said you know i'm i'm so in tune with what's going on in in efc and the one thing that i said to myself here in the uk they we do, they don't really know much up until they see them in the ufc they don't yes. know what's going on back there and how big efc is in in africa and yes. in south africa i've even said and i and i said this to dricos uh, when i spoke to him that for me when when ufc africa happens even though i'm nigerian i believe south africa has the infrastructure they have the well old machine that's already got the wheel turning the everything is there set we even have the announcer there <laughs> at home, you know let bruce let bruce have a time of leave bruce at home we have the announcer that everything Amen. is there Amen. you know Amen, and, and 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 i think and i think it should it should happen Amen. over there in south africa so you know seeing 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 things like this and again manifesting it into the world that's mm. you know that mm. that's that's worked for you and hopefully uh uh that down the line uh you know you 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 get to uh, you get to pull this off i'm i'm praying for it i'm i'm praying for it both um you see the same way i was in in cairo howard's inbox is the same way i mean mr white uh, <laughs> you, 100%. You, like dana white dana white i'm sure he has seen some of my messages i say in time in time we'll come to you you know but but it's the same way i'm doing it you know um mm. i I'm, I'm trying to make sure that when it, when UFC Africa happens. Now, before we even move forward, I want to show so much love to my people in Nigeria because mm. over 220 million people estimated. And that was that was the unofficial count. <laughs> mm. The amount of power in just the numbers alone. If if our Nigerian people could just get behind MMA, even if it's two to five percent we're gone brother we're gone blow up, blow up. look it, it doesn't even matter what product you're selling mm. if not pencil you sell and you're selling one specific pencil you're gone mm. if it's plastic you sell plastic bag you sell you're gone brother you're making millions based on numbers alone mm. so yes i would love for ufc to come you know to, to the continent yeah. I would love to re represent the UFC on the continent, mm. but it's so difficult to ignore the numbers. Can you imagine? I remember when I was in Nigeria in 2017, mm. 50 cents was there at the same time. <laughs> and the concept of it, bro, it was like water. People were like water. It was like the numbers were ridiculous. You know Insane. what I'm saying? Insane. Imagine. Now, I'm not saying they should, they should not bring it here. Mm. I'm just saying, can you imagine? The yeah. numbers that that UFC would pull. I think Dana White is still sleeping on us. I'm gonna sound a bit bit arrogant, but I think Dana White is still sleeping on us. You yeah. can't be taking it to Australia. You can't mm. be taking it to New Zealand and not bring it to Africa. I yeah. beg, I beg. It's you got know, come so, to Africa. Um, you know, so it's it's huge. It's huge. And now we've got we've got the attention of people. Uh, we've got the attention of the world. Mm. There's a there's a hot fight that is boiling. We will come to that one. Yeah, but we'll Africa is what is the is what where it should be. That's where is I it? Think. That's yeah. That's yeah. where is that? I, I, and I agree with you because I feel like they they keep saying UFC Africa, right? I want to start hearing UFC Nigeria, UFC South Africa, UFC yeah. Ghana, UFC yeah. Benin Republic. UFC Morocco, mm. you know, yeah. I, I want to say, I'm going to be exactly, you know, so it shouldn't just be UFC Africa because Africa is a continent, you know, but when we're talking, start visiting all these different countries because these are untapped market, well, like you yeah. said, the, the, the market is so rich, it's so untapped. And 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 there, there's, there's so much that, you know, that could, that could blow for, 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 for Africa and and MMA, you know, all together in one in one unison. So it's yeah. something that, you know I'm I'm really really looking forward to seeing, and I, I'm hoping it's going to happen sooner than later. Um, <laughs> and, 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 like, and like I said earlier on, uh, the one thing that I, that I 
wanted to do with for for EFC was to introduce a lot of the people that are no love MMA over here in the in the UK that don't have any idea what's going on out there in South Africa in the EFC. And I always want to shine light uh, on 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 MMA sports uh, over there in Africa uh, and and EFC in 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 particular. And you have had the the, the honor of you know calling some of the biggest names over there in in the sport. Dracos Duplessis is you know is the number one contender right yeah. now in 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 South Africa. Uh, I mean in the UFC, and yes. we know what he's about: hardworking, intelligent fighter. But from my personal speakings to him, the dog in him, the dog. This man yeah. has a dog in him. And, and and unless unless you you've really been around him and speak spoke to him and hear the way he conveys his message to you, you probably wouldn't really feel it and and understand what I'm trying to say. He's, he's baffling a lot of people how he's beating all these people. But when you listen to him and he tells you that none of these guys want him more than I do, that's the only reason I'm beating this guy. Yeah, my style might be ugly, my style might be this. I might not look good on the eye, but the one thing none of these guys know is how much I really want this. Can you can you describe you know your 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 dealings with him? You know you have even personal relationships, like you said, with with a lot of these fighters, but Dracos in particular. How how is he as a person? How have you found him in 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 your time dealing with him? Uh, as as an EFC fighter before moving on to the UFC? Beautiful question. Beautiful question. So important. Before I get to Gricus, mm -hmm. I want to give a shout out to Coach Mone. Yes, sir. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I want to start at the top. Yeah. And um, <laughs> I believe that CIT, the team CIT right now and CIT Boxing are the absolute premium of, of fight clubs. Al alongside a lot, a lot of other guys. You know, alongside the, a lot the, of other guys. The Tinkerbell. Yeah. And yeah. I'm not going to name the, uh, uh, all of them. PFSA. But, but I want to give a special mention to Coach Monet. The mm. other day I was with him, um, at EFC 105. Mm. And I give him a big hug. And I said, well done for keeping your composure. Well done for getting this far, for getting these boys this far. You'll see how close he is with them. You'll see how invested he is in their daily lives. Mm. Not just when they get into the gym. In their daily life, their nutrition, their emotional welfare, their physical well-being, all of that. Okay, enough with Coach Monet. He's a gentleman, great gentleman, by the way. Mm. Now we get to Brickers. We've seen, as South Africans, we've seen Brickers from when he was 18 years old. Um, from the days when he actually fought another another EFC legend, Soldier Boy, Gareth, mm. so Soldier Boy McClellan. Yeah. He still had that very, very raw talent. But man, the boy was powerful. The boy was hungry. Hmm. Um, and, and you know, with that pedigree of wrestling, um, you know, it was inevitable that she was going to get to a very, very rec recognizable space. My dealings with, with, with Krikas and, you know, have been very, very humbling in hmm. terms of the guy can go to UFC. And two days later, he's an EFC in the corner of one of his fighters. Incredible. Pouring water, wiping the guy. <laughs> He's a corner man. Mm. And he just fought last week in, in UFC. Mm. No, he didn't just fight. He won. Mm. Top five. He, he, he came from top ten. Top mm. five. Next week, you will see him at EFC. Yeah. There's another guy called Mark Hume. He's going to be the mm. next signing. Yep, yep. But we'll get to Mark. Um, and so, for me, it's been very, very humbling. But most of all, it puts the world into an oyster where he has been such a high flying guy and he has brought the world to South Africa. Now, because of him, people are starting to say, Hey, what's going on there in Africa? <laughs> what you, trying to do in you know what I'm saying? <laughs> where, where he's blowing guys out of the hex like this, you know, mm. why are these guys so strong? Why are these guys so disciplined? What's what, what what caliber of, of wrestling is this and fighting is this? You know, it, it, he's he's a very humble guy. Mm. Quite often when I see Drikas, 
we will just be looking at each other, sizing each other up, saying, hey, nice fashion. Very, very good. You know, that was, that was one, of the first, one of the first exchanges with me and him. He's like, hey, man, I always recognize, when you get your suits? You know, that was the first, one of the first questions um, I got from, even before I became a Hex announcer, right. um, a Hex monster. So it, it's, he is very, very genuine. Very, very genuine guy. Very, very down to earth. Also very stylish. Um, you know, very, very respected not um controversial at all you know um and he recognizes everybody that has that has contributed to his journey uh. and so i think i think the man has got a special uh a, a special a special character character special personality if and when he does become champion and I, and I know Izzy, Izzy might be watching this also. <laughs> I know Izzy might be watching this. Um, if and when he does become champion, and I know Izzy knows it as well, he's going to make a very, very respectable champion. Um, and he's going to make a, an exemplary, exemplary champion as well. He already has done it at home here in South Africa. Huh. And that's why he has so many people following him. And his, his star is very bright, man. Then you have also have MSP, who grew up under the I've, I've seen MSP before he even had a jawline <laughs> as a man. Before he even had a jawline. Mm. He, was he was a boy. He was a little mm. boy. Mm. Now I look at, now I look at um, most savage player as a man. And I'm, I'm calling him now. I'm like, yo, dog, let me into your promotion. <laughs> let me into mm. you know? it. So, so it's, it's amazing to see the journey of these guys, as well as the the, the other guys that that I've, I've I've made a great relationship with, but specifically, Rickus is a very very special character and a very special asset to African MMA. Hundred um, percent. We we seen his his rise through the rankings all the way to 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 number one contender spot, and and you know we, I remember just before he fought uh, Robert Whitaker. Even mm -hmm. I had him on for the Darren Till fight. It was actually him and MSP. Both of them were were in were in Vegas at the time uh, at the Performance Institute, and yes. you know we, we we did like a like a double like a double uh, sort of podcast. And he, he talk about somebody that's manifesting things into into life. Um, he actually said, "You know what? My fight might be the one that get Darren Till cut." Or retired from the UFC. I said, "Oh my <laughs> God!" You know where they happened? He said, "Look, I'm going to finish him, and when I do, that will probably be the fight. That will be the probably be the final nail in his coffin." And it was, <laughs> it, it was, it was right on the money. It was right on the money. He came with the performance. He came through with with with, with the with with the, with the energy, and we we did a video on how how Dracos would beat. Robert Whitaker, <laughs> and people were laughing at us. You can go check the comments. It, it was funny, was and um, <laughs> and 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 true to it, he went out. He delivered just like he said he would. We also had him on again. We spoke to Dracos, and um, he, he he said this was what he was going to do, which again is gone out and 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 proved it. And yeah. but everything else <clears throat> that's around because I saw your post. Uh, or, or not your post, but your comments um, uh, on 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 the easy and Drikos uh, uh, um, face off, if you like, after Drikos's win against Robert, Robert Whitaker. But before we get that to that actual um, situation, there, what did you make of Drikos's performance in itself, going out and putting away somebody like Robert Whitaker that no one, not many people, maybe people from back home. A few people from my corner, no one that I know backed him. I, there, there was an actual show uh, uh, on uh, on on YouTube. Uh, it's called the Pro Speak, where every fighter in the UFC they pick who they think is going to win the fight. People lost on you up until twenty. I counted twenty five. Not one, not one pro fighter picked Drakos to win against Robert Whitaker. That goes to show how much of an underdog he was. But like I said, maybe people from back home in South Africa, a few sections of people that really fuck with Drakos over here, 
Mm-hmm. Um, uh, you know, from, from my section, I didn't know mm-hmm. no one else that was really backing him. But what did you make of the outstanding performance that he put forward to finish somebody as well-rounded, as well-respected, as 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 serious as Robert Whittaker? Please tell me what, you, what you thought about it. I have one word, clinical. Mm. Um, it was coming from whom? First of all, again, clinical. Mm. Coming, coming from South Africa, coming from home, and people knowing who Drikas is and watching his fights from when he was young, we knew what kind of dog he has. In him. We knew, we've seen Drikas going to the depths of hell in a fight and mm. pulling himself out. We know the caliber of, of corner man and coach he has. Mm. Um, we, we also know the amount of power that he packs in his punches. So I think it was maybe natural that South Africans were backing him more than the outer world. Um, Robert is a legend of the UFC. Mm. So who are we to start saying that the Reaper was going to be cleaned like that? Mm. <laughs> that the Reaper was going to be reaped? Um, <laughs> so, so for me, I was watching the fight again the other day because it was just like, it was such an anomaly how he finished it. Um, but then leading up to the fight, Obviously, Drakus had gone through his nasal um, surgery. Yes. It yep. allowed him to obviously now breathe even better. And I can see yeah, that. And, and I can definitely tell there was a huge difference. I mean, I was watching the fight against Till. Most mm. of it, Drakus's mouth was open. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was fighting with this. <laughs> Bro, if they, clip your, if they clip your chin <laughs> like that, it doesn't take much for you to speak. You know? Yep. And, and um, he's there to fight. So you can only imagine almost feeling like you're drowning and you have to, you can only breathe through your mouth. Mm. Now we come to the, to the um, Robert fight. Um, excuse me. Yep. Now we come to the Robert fight and the amount of composure that Rick has had is unseen in his career. Um, his, his, and, and remember what dropped, what dropped the Reaper was a jab. Yeah. It wasn't even a shot. Yeah. That's a test to the amount of power this guy has. <laughs> After the jab, what happened? He didn't rush in as, 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 as we know what Drikas would do. I watched Drikas in, in Times Square, his very last fight before COVID yep. in South Africa. Mm. He rushed the guy. Guy could have clipped him. You know, it's the fight game, you mm. know. But with, this, with the Reaper, he, he saw what he was doing. He was very, very calm. He picked his shots very, very wisely. He didn't rush in. He that kept body his shot to the power, Jesus. I mean, that body <laughs> shot. You know, you know, after five seconds is when the thing will not be. You know, it will be, <laughs> you know, it will be like electricity. You know, um, it will just yeah. switch off. Yeah. yeah. So, it was, it was an extremely ex- uh, impressive, and it was a whole other DDP. We, n- now, People are not calling him Still Knox. Now he's DDP. Mm-hmm. Um, and it reminds, it reminds you of the wrestling days. I'm, I'm sure you're a huge wrestling <laughs> uh, RVD and, you know, and those guys. Fan, you know? Yeah. And you know, those kind of names that have weight to them, DDP. Yeah. You know, um, when you start getting those type of names, you know you've made it. You, when you your know name you sticks, you, you've made it. It was a name it. that was given to you by the people. You didn't yeah. give yourself that name. No. So the people who gave, mm. gave you that name, you're certified. You're certified in South Africa is already a legend. Mm. Um, but man, l- looking at Izzy versus Whitaker and looking at DDP versus Whitaker, DDP had a cleaner performance. Mm. He finished him in the second round. Mm. Um, nothing taken away from Izzy, always. You know, my brother's my brother. Um, 100%. But, but, I'm, I was so impressed with the new DDP, mm. you know, um, very, very mature. And he even, he even congratulated himself. I was laughing when he, when he saw the very first footage of himself. Mm. He goes, hey, well done, because he didn't rush in, you know, you picked your shot. <laughs> I'm very impressed with myself, you know. So, man, the, the, the guy's performance spoke for itself. The guy's performance spoke for itself. I think we have, uh, you know, He's now he's contender number one. 
What can we say? It's a, a, a strong. It's not just a contender. It's a strong contender. A very, very strong, very strong contender. Easy knows that. Yes. Easy knows that. And the reason I say Easy knows that is because I have never, in my, in all my time of watching and being a fan of Easy, seen mm. him so inarticulate. Mm. When he got in front of, when, when he got in front of, Easy is. He's one of he's a Niger boy now. He's very articulate. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Whether he's uh, speaking Yoruba or he's speaking English, he's extremely articulate. He's calm. He's cool. He's collected. He's to the fumble same. his words on that mic there, uh -uh. where he was talking, Since that's never Since happened when? before. Since You're when? right. You uh, are right. You are right. Uh, you hit the nail on the head right there. Yeah. And and um, <clears throat> and, and again, I say, Izzy, Izzy recognizes that, but of course he must recognize that because he's a great. He mm. great recognizes great. Mm. Game recognizes game. And um, man, we are in for one of the biggest <laughs> African fights <laughs> in the history of the UFC. <laughs> I I am I'm I'm salivating at the fight. And, and the crazy part of it is, you know, when 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 people don't understand about the fight gods. And the fight gods give you a gift. This is one of them. Yeah. Nobody saw Dracos again winning the way he did. Mm. Mm. He didn't take no damage. Mm. And it's a quick turnaround. We don't even have to wait that long for this fight. Ha. This is a gift from the fight mm. gods. Yeah. Now, the craziness that happened in the in the cage with with Easy stepping up to 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 drink us in the face off i said the right off the jump because i was doing a watch along i was doing a live reaction a live watch along so i had mm -hmm. to I, I just had that split second there to to really react to what what i, I was saying I and and I, I i wasn't i wasn't impressed with what i was hearing from easy I wasn't impressed at all um it did come out a few days later when he put it out that he did mean it's not just something that he just did mm. of the of the yeah, out of impulse it wasn't it wasn't an impulsive thing it's something yes. it planned it cooked yes. that up um and easy we know is a very very calculated individual uh, uh but even though it was planned even though it wasn't uh uh uh, uh, uh impulsive reaction it, it's probably easier to forgive if it was impulsive but the right. fact that it was it was even planned made it worse for me you know what i mean um and i thought to myself regardless of what you th what you thought about the situation and this is just my take on it reacting mm -hmm. on it, it, it right, right in the first instance i didn't i didn't find it, it i found it distasteful to, to, oh, to say I, the I least. Find another word for it you, you took that word right out of my mouth i, I found it distasteful to, to to say the least but he's still our guy right mm -hmm. and yes. i said this to Dricos because in, in my in my other bit of my studio back there I got posters of Easy all around the place, and I said to to Dracos, "Look, he's my countryman. I'm a big fan of him, and I'm a big fan of your work. But at the same time, you know, there's 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 still there's still supposed to be some some level of a uh, some level of respect from 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 both sides of the camp. Now, you knowing what you know, and seeing what you've seen, what mm -hmm. have you made of the whole thing from when? Dricos first made the comments to the way Easy has reacted to it and and turned it into this into this uh, uh almost like a race war and I, and I know you said you you in Uncle Dana's <laughs> Uncle Dana's uh, 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 DM but he is rubbing his hands he's licking his lips with all this craziness that's happening but for us how have you found it? So um, it's a very, very sensitive situation. Oh, yeah. Um, not, not too many people know about South African um, history, but mm. maybe a lot of people would at the same time. <clears throat> we have a history of division between black and white people in South Africa. The, on on a, even a smaller scale, there's even division between white people like the English and the Dutch or the, yeah. the local, the, Africa, the Africans. Yeah. But now it, the, the, the real one that flares up and quite often is still... Is still till today is the the division of the black and white now me being an mma fan me being somebody who has an amateur background 
with guys who have sweated with who are white, who are Indian, mm. Chinese. We've, 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 we've shed blood. Um, we shed sweat. We've, we've, we've become better men, better versions of ourselves through each other. Mm. I feel it's very unfortunate. It's very, very unfortunate. I always say, I always advise my people, when you meet a stranger, the first three, three things that you stay away from in your conversation, race, religion, and politics. Oh. Yeah? Race, religion, and politics. Those three, three things, you stay away from them until you get to know who this person is. Right? Now, with regards to what's happening um, and the comments initially that was made, and, and, going, and let me tell you something. Uh. This comment that was made by Prickers, and we're going to we'll address the, the comment. There is an underlying feeling uh. from, from the African MMA community that how many African champions have we had? Well, We've there were three, them. Kings, three kings. Three kings, we? yes. Okay. Unless I don't know something, and, uh. and, and forgive my ignorance, uh. Have we seen the belt traveling through the continent? I just want to start there. Have we seen the belt arriving properly to Niger? Even if it's the belt, have we seen any active advocation for UFC when you have three African champions ruling the most popular divisions in the organization? Have we seen any positive and outcome where EFC Africa is going to happen, actually, we're not just calling it EFC no. Africa, where no. it's actually happening, where, our, where we must feel like our guys have spoken on behalf of us, Usman, Izzy, Nganu, and say, look, there are people waiting at home for this thing to happen there. This was the conversation that we had before anything happened any comment was made by Drikas. Right. Okay. God, I think the I'm guys saying. took took the belt on tour back home. Not to stay there, just on tour. Like on tour. like 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 a like a like almost like a victory lap, if you like. Yeah, yes, yes. Like, no, certainly. And, and you know, kudos to them. It <laughs> happened. You know, kudos to them, it happened. Mm -hmm. Um it, uh, it was almost uh, Muhammad Ali esque, you know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> taking, taking back home. And that, that was very iconic because mm. it was the first time that it had already any, any been done ever ever mm. been done. Yeah. Right. Um, my thing is, we need UFC to come to Africa, and the only person who we feel has pushed for it to come this side is somebody who, apart from race, mm. lives here. Mm. Who has the power to say dinner? I want the fight to. How many times has Izzy called the fight to be in, in New Zealand? He has called it now. Izzy yes. is a, is a, is a, bro. New Zealand, the, the New Zealand numbers don't don't meet ours. Yeah, they don't meet African numbers. Mm. In South Africa, if you want to say South Africa is not just South Africa, it's Southern Africa: Zimbabweans, mm. Malawians, yeah. uh, Botswana. Yeah, all these can come together and say it's not a country. Australia is, is a continent by itself. If you want numbers, you'll see numbers if you come to Africa. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Of course. So before we get there, before we go to the comment of, of Rikas, uh -huh. this was the underlying feeling that we've had three kings, but we're not recognized yet. Uh. Yeah? And it's a bit painful. Okay. Then we get to this comment where... And, and I, I've, I've, I've struggled to get to the real root and i know there's a there's a there's a video mm. and on top of that there's an underlying tone of of uh racist tension in south africa okay yeah. so now we have that and then we have a white man because he is white yeah who was born in africa raised in africa and trained in africa lives in Africa, uh. who is now the strongest contender to become middleweight champion. Uh. It's no longer just, no, I'm black, 
therefore you must recognize Africa. Mm. Now it's I live here, I train here, I want to fight here. Yeah. And I want the dogs to stay here. And I oh. want everybody to come here. Right. So this is the this is the force behind the comment that was now made, which might have been misconstrued, which I believe has been misconstrued. Yeah. I, I, I don't even want to touch on the actual comment, but let's go there. Hmm. When, because as a white man says, and this is what he said, I am the real African champion. This is what Dricus said. Hmm. He didn't say, I am an African champion. I didn't say I'm black more than you. Um, because to say to start to those those simple ones, I'm African champion, negates what Easy is, negates what Nganu is, negates uh, um, Usman. Usman. But but in in the in in the in the the subline of I am I am the real African champion is when I win, the belt must come home and stay here, and stay Not here, free. and I have power to bring UFC here. Mm. It's so easy to misconstrue that. With our history of, 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 in, uh, of racial inflammation, it's so easy. You know how proud Nigerian people are. Of course. Proud, of course. You know, who are you as an, as an African, as a white Do, man? You will not get an apology either. <laughs> uh, no. You know what I'm so, so who are you now as an African man to come and tell me anything about I'm, I'm the real African? Yeah, cut out. Before yeah. you even get to champion, mm. I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> right? So, so, it's so easy for, for the message to get misconstrued. I myself being, uh, and I consider myself a Nigerian South African because I, I grew up in Nigeria. I mm. grew up as an adult here in, in South Africa. I know mm. both cultures and I love both cultures. Bro, let me show you something. Let me show you something. Please. Please. Do you, you see this? I was eating it before we called. I was eating it before Oh, all oh, cross. Excuse, excuse the red bowl. It, it is sweet parts when it's not even in, in, in ceramic. Yeah? For people that don't know, that is, that is our go-to. Day to day. Yes. Food of choice right there. <laughs> yeah. Forget your jollofs. Forget your oh, pandediams. Forget oh, that that right there. Yeah. That's what that's where is that's where is that. Please that's continue. Right. So, so for me, <laughs> it's funny that it's still there. For me, <laughs> for me, it was so painful that what's going to happen now is that there's going to be a great division and it's going to be a racial division. It's not going mm. to be a division of skills. It's mm. not going to be um, a unification of Africa. Even if Dickers brings the belt home, Niger people will be will just be looking at him like, you know, he's not one of us anyway. Where mm. it's supposed to be like that. It's supposed to be like that, yeah. It's supposed to be like that, you know? Um, it's really, really unfortunate. I have me I have a message for Dickers, and And the message is, I appeal to Dickers, to stay real. I'm very proud of him for not taking the bait because Izzy is a mastermind. He was baiting him. He was. He was baiting him. It's like, dare you to say it back. Dare you to say it back. Imagine, imagine the mentality in the fight because Izzy is Izzy, 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 Izzy a style bender. Mm. Style bender for those people who don't understand what style bending is. He's not bending his style. He's bending your style. <laughs> He's bending your style. <laughs> he baits you, right? Yep. So when we have somebody, you know, who's white and African, and we, we do embrace white and African here. Trust mm. me, we embrace white and African here. Mm. Because we're, we're, we're trying our utmost best to get over this thing and work together. It's one of the greatest nations on the continent, in the world. We have mm. we have icons that are, that are recognized here because of South Africa. I don't even have to mention them. Mandela, Mandela yeah. Miriam Makeba. I don't even I know, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, of course. But then we have 
we have Pella, we have all kinds of people. You know what I'm saying? Even the even the David O's and everybody here that uni unify Africa. Yeah. yeah. What breaks my heart is that even when Rikas wins this one, I fear say there's still gonna be a racial division. Uh. This is my greatest fear. Whether whether we love MMA or not, we have to get over it. I do have the slight inclination to think that Izzy is a very intelligent guy. He knows how to sell a fight. Uh. And we've all seen how things happen um, after fights. Guys will look at each other. We've been through a war. We've beaten each other until we almost died. I respect you. Let's drop everything else that was said. And this, for me, will be a dream if that happens. It will be an absolute dream the day Izzy wins or the day DDP wins. And he says, you know what, my brother? Let's drop everything. We've shared blood together. And we can actually raise the level of African MMA together. This is, this is the message that I pray that the guys are going to have. And when Izzy does see this, because Izzy will see this, same message to him. Um, style Bender is not Style Bender because uh, he's an icon. He's not, just, he's not just a fighter. You know what I'm saying? Uh. He transcends race. He transcends geographical locations. He transcends sexuality, even. The, nobody will come and be wearing <laughs> nail polish. What you tell him? If, if it was me wearing nail polish, watching the speech, what would you expect that I get? I dare you. I dare you to try and say something to easier. Say, I know you're a sissy because you're doing this. You will show him now. Yeah, of course. Him. Of course. Yeah. So, so he transcends a lot. That's why he's an icon. Mm. And, you know, enough said about those two. It's, it, like I said, it's the biggest thing. It's the biggest thing. You, you, you've, you've absolutely addressed it in the most perfect way. I, and I said this, um, you know, on my live reaction that, you know, for me, I see what's going on right now. And as it's going on, it's distasteful. But I hope and I pray by the end of it all, by the end of all of it, we 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 seen it even with how easy it is with Pereira now, how easy it is with with John Jones now. Yeah, you know, yes. we yes. saw we saw Usman and Kobe. Yeah. Look, look, yeah. just look how look how far Kobe went with Usman when they mm. were building the fight. You know, mm. he he mm. stepped on every line that every. there was with Usman. Every Family. line, it's yeah. you yeah. know, and and we, we've we've seen it in the fight game where eventually these guys because they share. That time in the in, in you know in the cage, it means so much to them that they have no choice but to, but to show respect to, to to one another. And this is my hope. This is what I'm praying for, same as you. And hopefully, you know, when when they both have that post 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 fight uh, 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 interview, uh, it's all about bringing everybody together. And and bringing the biggest prize to Africa, which is which is UFC, and 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 making MMA fantastic. And I'm sure by the end of it all, both of them, their bank accounts are going to be great again. You know what I mean? <laughs> so let's not let's not let's pre, let's not pretend like these guys. You know, they they, they want eyeballs they on know. this thing. They, they know, they, 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 exa exactly exactly what it is. So we, we know we know we know that they, we, we're going to see one of the biggest fights uh, in a in a couple of months. It's not even far away. It's it's so crazy how 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 we, we you know everybody's looking forward to this fight. But before we let you go, you you've you've been you've been in the game for so long, and and the the people that you know that you've mentioned people like uh yako duplacy again from 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 cit jess monami from 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 pfa uh yes. sa you know the, you've even seen some guys from overseas mark Ewen from over here in scotland yeah, uh, yeah, love you know tommy Theo is from from canada you you know yeah. you've you, you've you've called a lot of some of these big big fights but i want to I want to ask you, what fight have you actually seen that you did not think this fighter was gonna pull is was gonna pull this off, and all of a sudden he just blows your mind? Lindile Manengela, the doctor, <laughs> versus Triple H, the caster. 
bro, bro, bro. Shout out to Shin I, I don't know if you remember that fight, mm. but let me give you the backstory, please. Sindile, Sindile had just lost his father a week before. Mm. Heavyweight contender, I believe I could be corrected that Triple H, uh, Matunga Triple H Jikasa was heavyweight mm, champion. Triple H Jikasa, that's another one. Shout out to Triple H, we've had him once. And they got into the ring, and Sindile was before before the fight. He was broken. Mm. The man was close with his father. The man is a professional doctor. Wow. So between between training and between your father's death, you are still being a doctor. You're still caring for other people. Wow. And you're still going to have a heavyweight fight against an absolute beast of a man. Okay? They get into the ring. I had, Luckily, I had a great, great relationship with, um, you know, the doc. And um, that's one of my favorite, favorite, favorite uh, introductions actually ever. That was the first time I, re I re remember connecting with a fighter eye to eye and knowing his story and feeling him. And, and, and I was very emotional for him, uh, for what he was about to go through, whether he was going to win it or not. Mm. He had came in there for, because he, he knew that his father wouldn't want him not to take the fight just because he died. No, no just because. I mean, mm. very, very big just because, you know. And, and he got in there and he was being beaten by Triple H. Uh. beaten by Triple H and something at one point in the fight changed in him and it's almost as if he remembered him, who he was uh. and he, he adopted a different technique and he started using his legs and started kicking and kicking away and then he changed levels and started kicking away and people loved him and, but the fight was going the other way you know eventually he chopped him down he chops Triple H down Oh. And I will tell you this, the arena, the PI erupted. <laughs> the PI erupted. People were in tears. I'm talking about fans were in tears. Um, and eventually when I announced and the new EFC heavyweight champion of the world, he was here in my face. He was here in my face. And I remember hitting his chest. <laughs> Because that's how emotional I was. I never really make contact unless I'm greeting them and wishing them luck just before the fight. But I was so happy for him because of what he has gone through. And he broke down and he just went down onto his knees. And I'm sure for the next five minutes, he was sobbing, sobbing, sobbing. He was crying. This guy is big old. <laughs> the, guy, the guy is big. I'm tall. I'm, a, I'm as tall as big old people. Yeah. Sinile is like a good 15 centimeters bigger than me, but it's a mm. huge man on mm. his knees crying. Mm. Not for the win, because he wow. said he would go in there and fight because his father would have wanted that. Mm. That's the fight that stays in my mind. You know, it's it was such an emotional time for every single person and everyone who knew the story. It was fantastic. It was very, very fantastic. fantastic. We, we see a lot of... um stare downs go go wrong or gone wrong you, you i mean what is it like and the one that comes to my mind you because you just you just mentioned his, his name there the one that comes to my mind everybody in the uk that saw it you know especially in 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 my in my in my part of the demographic they, they were going crazy we posted it on our page mm -hmm. triple h and van damme <laughs> when them to win at it. <laughs> that, that was... It was like watching two huge mountains come together. <laughs> it was like watching... watching. I mean, they say, I, I, um, if the mountain will go to... Uh, Allah won't go to Mohammed or whichever way, mountain will come. It was like the mountain and Mohammed coming together. I'm looking at these two shoes guys. <laughs> I'm thinking, man, is the, is, the, is the hex even strong enough <laughs> to, to hold this guy, guy. Right now? You know, they are big boys, man, and very, very powerful. Um, you know, uh, so yeah, that was that was crazy. That was crazy. And then what transpired in the end, I believe it was still with Triple H. Um, and uh, I think well, Triple H had turned around and... 
he got a punch from behind. I don't know if you if you saw that. Yeah, I <laughs> that saw was, that. The, the whole this 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 that reminded me of the whole Khabib and Connor situation after the fight was done. Yeah. The whole melee. Yeah. What was that like being around? What was that like being around that in in the in the arena? What what, what was that like? Because you were so Chairs close. Were Chairs were flying. <laughs> oh my god. Bia. Bia are known for being very very loud. There's a lot of Congolese. Mm, there's a lot of South yes. African. Um, um, Angolans, you know, so they're very loud. You've got guys, um, you know, very rambunctious mm. kind of guy. Mm. So when they didn't like what happened, man, I'm telling you, there was Zico, the gorilla, Mankengele, he was around. These are guys who mm. were shaking their hand. Can't even believe this is a hand. It's like a, a, a Thor's, Thor's hammer that you're shaking. Mm. So mm. there was like so much testosterone force chairs flying around fight here fight there security company being overwhelmed man and then and then <laughs> i also got threatened luckily i just said hey, he's a big garbage you know i'm just the guy on the mic that's that's it <laughs> I'm, I'm just the voice man please <laughs> You know, so that man, that was that was crazy, man. That was I actually got hit by a chair twice um while I was in the ring announcing. So yeah, that was that was that was I was within the action. <laughs> that's 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 crazy, man. And that that's that's part of the 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 nostalgia sometimes, you know, that just being in a privileged uh 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 position to do the job that you do that you love so much every day uh i mean it's it's it's, it's got to be a dream come true for you um and and you're loved you're loved by a lot a lot of people from over here and you know it's one of the reasons why i wanted to do this so i can because i've spoken as you know from 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 the way that you know the the conversations that we've had i have a very very close relationship with with a lot of the fighters on the roster and um you you've just you've been this is like bucket list for me right now that (laughs) that we've just that we've just that we've just done here and um you know i'm hoping for many, many more to come. I, I could talk to you forever. Uh, Certainly. You know? well, we, could, we, could, we could sit, we could sit down here and, and talk forever. You know, maybe we could even be doing, um, you know, post-fight interviews or post-fight, uh, just the rundown after this. You know, every, every, well, if, every if, year, we'll if, set a date. If you don't, if you don't, if you don't mind, if you don't mind, that would be dope. That would be absolutely dope, you know, because I've, I've, I've approached... Um, I've approached EFC Graham to to something of that effect. He gave me his email. I dropped him a couple emails, but nothing yeah. nothing's real. And I know how busy these guys are and yeah. how much their email must be rammed. Yeah. But um, yeah. with your connection, maybe we can we we can we can get some we can get we something can over, make it happen. over over to EFC Graham and 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 see see what what see what they can make make happen between us over there because we're trying to shine the light on. EFC over here in the UK and uh, you know it's something that I, I really really want want to do I'm, I'm be, even be like an ambassador for 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 EFC for over here in the mm-hmm. UK because I, I, it's something that that's really really close to my heart and uh, mm-hmm. I want I want to carry on doing so you know sure. like I said with with your connection with your blessing maybe it's something that we can that we can and, put and together. I, I'm actually looking to, we'll, we'll, we'll sit down and talk properly and we'll, uh, the next one we're definitely going to do something we'll have mm-hmm. a, a rundown no no problem at all now before you go before you go one yes, last thing francis nganu ha ah. has finally pulled off they said he fumbled the bag <laughs> this guy is laughing all the way to the bank Absolutely. please tell me how proud you are of him being able to get what he wants in terms of the boxing fight with the fighter that i wanted to do it with in tyson fury and still able to become a PFL ambassador for for Africa uh, to 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 get all the contracts and and everything sorted with PFL where is now his current home. Some people say it will go back to the UFC. We don't know, but what we do know right now is is a PFL ambassador for Africa. Is a PFL fighter, and now he secured one of the biggest fight in his career that's going to give him the biggest payday in his career tell, please tell the people how proud you are of him and uh, and what you, what you make of the whole thing 
I don't think people understand the amount of pressure this man had. Uh. I don't think people understand the amount of pressure this man had. Not only because you are seen as the most powerful man on earth, but where he came from. Absolutely dirt poor. Now, the guy is still very humble. Still so humble. Uh. Coming from, from, from all that way, become a, becoming a super mega star in the UFC, taking on the monster that is Dana White. <laughs> the monster. <laughs> and I think monster in a, in a very respectful way, but I mean... No, he, he knows he's a monster. Dana he, knows this. <laughs> no, no, no. But I mean, it's... It, 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 and, 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 and not succumbing to the pressure of negotiations, mm. the pressure of his own fans calling him to say, bro, don't be fumbling the bag. Accept the fight now. What is it? Mm. You only had how many four more fights? How many more years before you, you leave this hex? Just take the fight. Take the fight. Take the fight. What is it? Are you running away? Are you scared? You don't want John Jones. You don't want this guy. You don't want this guy. What is it? From, from that to basically going independent, maintaining his integrity, signing with PFL to now fighting the Gypsy King. And anybody, anybody who has Gypsy King is already rich, bro. He's set for life. But he's making Gypsy King richer than he will ever be. Mm. With Francis and Gun. He's making Gypsy King richer than he will ever be. Mm. This is Francis Ngannou. Um, as an African, I'm so proud of him, man. Um, he's, he's maintained his humility. You know, he still goes back home. I'm sure he still chops local food like I do. Of course. You know, mm. um, you know I, I just, I, there's no way to say as an African how proud we are. It's just, he's, he's, a, he's an amazing human being as well. Mm. You know, and now he's got the back. He's got a huge back. Um, I still want to see, you know, that fight. I still want to see that fight, Jones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hope knows. it happens. I hope it happens. Whether whether PFL and UFC come together, or whether he goes back to UFC, I don't know if Dana White will will even have a purse big enough for him. Um, but I think I think just just off the pay per view, there will there will be enough of a purse um, for yeah. him to fight Jones. Gano Jones, can you imagine the build up? Gano Jones. Oh. Hey. Oh. Oh my goodness! <laughs> they gave so, us an appetizer, you know, yeah, Gano and, and Gano and Joe. They gave us a little appetizer with that little stare down at the PFL event. Yeah, that, that happened Next recently. Day, Gan, and, I, and I love, I love Bongama. I love Bongama. Um, I love and I really would have loved for Bongama to be champion because I love that guy's character, man. Yes, but he himself said he's a very lazy guy. <laughs> 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 he's a very lazy guy. So. <laughs> I, I do love him still, um, mm. but yeah, man, this is where the the heavyweight the heavyweights are now. You know, they're leading boxing, they're leading boxing, and they're leading yeah. the MMA world. So it's it's absolutely yeah. incredible. I can't wait for that fight between Fury and Gadu. Um, What do you think is going to transpire there? Uh, I mean, uh, knowing what we know of of the Gypsy King, and and we now know that this is going to be an exhibition fight uh, 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 for for for. For the boxing fight, um, and it's going to be in boxing rules. Mm. And knowing how we know Tyson Fury, I mean, he's 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 a special individual. He's a, he's, a special, <laughs> he's a special, special, special guy yes. when it comes to this discipline. Mm. Obviously, mm. if it was MMA, it's a whole different thing. You know, the way we, it's not even a conversation. And that's that's, and I'm sure a lot of people are actually looking at it in the same way in boxing. Yes. Because of who Tyson Fury is, they should be saying it's not even a conversation, you know. Um, but we one thing we do know that Francis has is God's gift. God's gift, <laughs> you know. <laughs> this is God's gift. He's just he's stole on this is God's gift. He has that, and he has it in abundance. And mm. if he touches him, I don't know if. Tyson is getting up the same way he got up when Wilder touched him. I don't. Yeah, think I, 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 I don't. I, 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 I don't think that's going to happen. 
<laughs> you know. So it's just it's just a case of we'll wait and say, and again, we don't have to wait too long for that fight. That fight isn't you know, it's 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 around the corner as well, it's in October. Mm-hmm. So there's lots to look forward to. Errol Spence and, and Crawford. These are things yeah, that yeah, you know yeah. that should have happened. I, I keep saying if this if they were in MMA, that would probably be the, they'll be having their third fight. It'll be a trilogy by now. We won't be waiting till yeah. now to, to you know to be seeing the yes. fight. So it's 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 it's, it's beautiful what we're seeing in combat sports as a whole. And you you have good, good, big representation of combat sports in general. And we thank you for, for your service for everything that you know that you're doing that you've done that you'll continue to do for combat sports uh, as a whole thank you so so much we enjoy your work and uh, we want to see and carry on seeing more of you we're big big fans big big followers and we'll continue uh, to you know to push you and 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 uh, and promote your work wherever we can wherever we see it and um thank you so much for that people we have come to the end of the show uh, this has been hot so uh it South African Jollof, it goes by on, on, on Instagram. Yeah? <laughs> you know what I mean? Maybe it should put South African and Nigerian Jollof. Put everything together. Mix it up, my brother. Jollof you is know? Nigerian now. Jollof is Nigerian. It was actually <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I, I love it, Nigerian. But um, yeah, you, you, you've been so great. Thank you so much. You've been very, very generous with your time. I thank you so, so much. And um, hopefully, uh, very, very soon, like we just discussed, uh, you're going to be back on our screens uh, a lot more regularly, if, 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 if that's all right with you. Thank you. Well, I'm gonna, I want to do a shout out, you know, um, you know, to the biggest uh, combat show in the UK, from UK to the world. Uh, thank you so much to the Fight Week show. You guys are absolutely amazing. You've been doing an amazing job, Ola. So please... Follow the Fight Week show on Instagram. Follow them on YouTube. Make sure you support African MMA. And, uh, you know, we're going to be connecting real soon. So shout out to you. And uh, for me, your hex announcer, Koza Bilal Ramobo, I'm out. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much for that one. And um, people, up until the next video, we're out. Salute. Salute. Hey guys, this is John Anik from the UFC. You're watching the Fight Week show. Please subscribe, not now, but right now. Subscribe to the Fight Week show. We'll see you guys on the road soon.